happened in the horse fall accident that gave me this fractured skull and all of these brain hemorrhages that basically have taken me off work and changed my life a lot. I'm gonna show you guys the helmet that I was wearing while the accident happened. I'm really lucky to be here. I'm lucky to be alive. Things could have gone a lot worse. And so I'm gonna go through a little bit of what happened, um, how we can be different at horse shows, how that all can go down, because this accident changed my life and I'm a really good rider and it still nearly killed me. So I'm gonna go over a whole bunch of different things, show you the helmets, and uh, let's get into it. So first up, at the horse show, it's the Pennsylvania Mustang Horse Show, where they had two options for us. One was for the Devil's Garden horses that were recently started. You could come and you could show, and then after that part had finished up, they had an open Mustang show where anybody could compete with their Mustang and do different classes, as well as some other open classes as well. So I brought down two Mustangs of my own. I brought down Pretzel and I brought down Alfie. Pretzel is a Devil's Garden horse. So she's a seven-year-old mare that I got in May and this competition is in September. So if you think about that, she had till June, July, August, September, that's four months of training, four months of coming out of the holding pens, um, getting gentled, getting started. And during that whole process, I didn't have necessarily a focus of getting her super riding ready. I knew I wanted to get her riding, but the competition was originally meant to be divided into an adult division and a youth division that would be in hand only, so non-riding only on the ground. And then that changed because even though when we all picked up our horses, there were more than 20 people, there might have been more than 30, I forget the exact number, but there were lots of people. And then when it came time to show time, there were actually just about 10, just under 10 people willing to actually go to the horse show and those were all adults. So it ended up switching from an adult and youth in hand competition to an adults only competition that they decided to make both a riding division and an in hand division, which is great. That really fits really well. So when I was at the show with Pretzel, the first class is the handling and conditioning class and I did that in hand because everybody did it in hand. It's an in hand class and it's meant to show how well your horse handles, how well do they get on the trailer, how well do they um, do their pivot turns, how well do they let you brush them, uh, take their halter off, re-catch them, all those kinds of things. And so Pretzel did that really, really well. Or my apologies there, they didn't put the trailer loading in that class, that was put into the trail class. But the handling conditioning class is all about how well your horse accepts that on the ground training. And that was my first time actually getting asked to do the release in the round pen and then re-catch your horse. That was pretty cool. And she did that great. And she got um, first place in her division there. And then we did the uh, trail class. So as the trail class is getting set up, before that even happened, we were allowed to go into the arena and practice some things. And so I did everything on the ground with Pretzel. I walked her over the teeter-totter, we did the pool noodles. Not everything was set up, so there wasn't like water in the water box, um, the barrels weren't set up, so it, not everything was exactly there, but we got to practice a bunch of things, which was awesome, really kind of set your horse up for success. So we practiced that and she did well. And so then I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go put her saddle on and I'm gonna just see how she feels riding. And if she feels good, I'm gonna try riding this trail class. So I went and saddled her up, and at that point there was no more time to be in the actual arena to practice any obstacles. So I just rode her around outside of the arena, and she did walk trot, and I used my friends, um, Jen and Joe, who had come to watch and support me. They offered to be a rope gate, so they each held one end of the rope, and I tried doing a rope gate outside of the arena, using people as the standards. And Pretzel was doing really well. She was trotting outside of the pen. She did the, the pretend rope gate with my friends holding the rope really well. So I thought, you know what? We're gonna try doing this ridden division because she's doing really well and she did everything nicely in hand on the ground. So let's give it a go. So we did the competition ridden and she did really, really well. She did the pole, she did a back through gate. You know, she's never done a real gate before. That was her first time ever doing that. And she did it fantastic. 
the one obstacle where she struggled was the water box and she jumped the water box instead of walking through it. But even though she jumped it and we've never jumped before, it's not like she went scooting scared afterwards. She didn't run away or bolt or anything like that. So we just continued on. She did our trotting where she needed to. And then there's a part where you get off and you walk them in hand. She did that great. And then I got back on her just fine. She did the trailer loading just great. And she ended up winning her trail class. So now we're two for two. She has won both of her classes and I'm thinking this is awesome. So before the end of the day, I check in and I say, okay, so for freestyle tomorrow, freestyle is your class where you get to have um, three and a half to four minutes in the arena doing whatever you want just to show off your horse's skill. I had planned a totally on the ground freestyle. So I said, can I do it all on the ground or do I need to be in the saddle? And they're like, you need to do at least some of it in the saddle. You can do some on the ground, but you need to at least get on your horse at some point. So I was like, okay, I will come early tomorrow and practice a few things and just see what fits the best into our routine. Because I didn't want to change everything in our routine. I wanted to figure out what part of the routine Pretzel could ride. And we would just work that in. So I was like, I'll come early tomorrow and we'll get that figured out. So everything so far up until this point has gone really well. My other horse, Alfie, he came, he was gonna be competing in the South Carolina Mustang Challenge in two more weeks. And that one was a riding challenge and an in-hand challenge. So I was riding him, walk, trot, canter. He went around the ring. He did the obstacles, because after the show was over, we, able, we were able to go in their arena and ride those obstacles and he did great. We even did a Liberty demo at lunchtime and he stayed with me the whole time. So even as a huge arena, there's grass in the corners, he did not leave me at all and we did walk, trot, Liberty and he was wonderful. So all of that happened and then we, uh, we come back to the show the next morning to do our freestyle practice and so we're not the first ones out to the arena. Somebody else is already out there with their obstacles, doing stuff and there's some you know big things out there. So we take our obstacles out. I brought a couple bridges, some noodles, just a couple little things. And I you know, checked in with the other competitor, made sure it was okay where I put my stuff. And I remember doing everything with Pretzel on the ground first. Like I remember doing like a little run through with her being like, okay, like remember how to side pass the noodles, back through the noodles, back through a curtain. You remember how to do all this. And she's like, yep, yeah, everything's great. You know, gave her a cookie, everything was all good. So then I get on pretzel and in her freestyle routine, we on the ground, when I had planned this, we jump, we do canter rollbacks that are on long lines and we get on a really tiny pedestal that none of those things I think would be fair to try to get her to do ridden. So I thought the best place to try to incorporate riding is the side pass of the noodles because even before the competition day, She's side passed the noodles several times on the ground and she also has ridden side pass over a log, over a pole. So that's not that far of a stretch for her to learn. And I've also already ridden her through the curtain before and she's backed through the curtain before. So that shouldn't be a stretch to include that into her routine. So I'm like, that's the easiest part. We're gonna try to just have that for the riding and then everything else I'll still do in hand because I'm not gonna start jumping her with like, almost no time to practice. And I'm also not gonna start to try to train the canter when we've never done that before, but I wanted to include canter with the long line still. So I get on her and I'm like, all right, we're gonna side pass the noodles, which we'd already practiced on the ground. And I remember her side passing the noodles to the left beautifully and I gave her her cookie. And I remember going forward and starting to side pass the noodles right. And I remember as she did that, I remember she kind of got a little stuck, like, oh, this is hard. And so I remember just sitting there being like, that's okay, Pretzel, we're gonna take this slow. We're gonna just sit here for a second and just breathe. And that's the last thing I remember. So after the fact, <laughs> the next thing I remember is being in the hospital. And I vaguely remember um, one of my friends coming to visit me and like dropped off my clothes and stuff. Very small memory of that. I don't really remember any of the conversation or anything. Just remember seeing like a face and being like, oh, okay, like horses are taken care of. Um, and then otherwise I remember very little from my first week in the hospital. 
And so what I found out after the fact, after having um, like witnesses talk to me and hearing the stories and everything afterwards, and I even got to see a video of the trick that caused my horse to go into a bolt and for me to fall off. So what happened is I must have been sitting on my horse over the noodles, not facing the other competitors. So this is happening behind my horse. That other competitor is only about 30 feet away from me, maybe 30, 40 feet. So they're not that far away from me. And they are cueing their horse to rear to practice their, their rear trick for their freestyle. And when they do that, they use the whip pretty big, like they use that whip coming up and then their horse doesn't give them a big enough rear, so they hit their horse with the whip. And as they hit the horse with the whip, the horse then gives them a bigger rear, and that's the moment that my horse takes off running. And uh, the video, so this trick, while they were doing their trick, they had somebody filming the trick for them so that way they could review it after. So there's video of that, but I don't have that video they don't want me to share that video they don't want me to share their name or anything like that and I understand that you know they don't want to have a lot of blame placed on them so basically um, in the video I get to see what happens so I can clarify like what was it that scared my horse because poor pretzel gets a really bad reputation after this where um, like people think that she's this scary traumatized horse and I'm like I, in my mind I don't think it's gonna be that bad because um, like pretzel tries her heart out for me pretzel is great like pretzel has been a very easy horse to train and so as I learn what happened she um, apparently like like you see in the video the horse does her rearing trick and then basically right after that rear like right as that horse does her rear the camera points to the ground and you just hear in the back we're like oh no oh no because my horse is running off and so what ends up happening is I'm told from witnesses there that pretzel runs and goes into a really fast canter. Originally the canter is kind of like a, a go, like slow, like, oh no, Lindsay's telling me to stop, but ah, I have to run. Oh no, we're cantering for the first time ever because I've never ridden her at a canter before. So this is a whole bunch of bad things at once. She was over top of the noodles probably when this happened, not facing what was happening. So this is all happening behind her at a show with all these different obstacles set up because there's other competitors' obstacles. So there's other stressful things at play. So her energy level, her, her anxiety level is already a little bit up. And even though I was in the process of slowing down and being kind and being gentle, somebody's hitting their horse behind her and that horse's response is a rear. And Pretzel doesn't know that it's a rear on purpose. Pretzel just knows, oh my gosh, crazy person hitting their horse behind me and that horse is so upset it's rearing, we better boogie and get out of here. And so she does. And so to me, that's a totally reasonable response from Pretzel's end. She runs away from the danger and she takes me with her or intends to take me with her. And witnesses say that there were no bucks involved whatsoever, she just ran fast. And apparently as she went around the corner, my saddle slipped. Uh, not necessarily, it didn't slip like right under her belly, but apparently uh, when Pretzel was caught afterwards, the saddle was so tilted that they actually had to undo the girth to recenter it, to do it up again, to walk her back to the barn. So as she was going fast, my saddle slid and then because she was going fast, I had quite some momentum that spun me into a roll off of her. And apparently I did like a, a somersault type roll off of her. I have no memory of the fall at all. Apparently after the fall, I was immediately unconscious and the people who came over to see me realized I had clear fluid running out of my nose. So the ambulance was called. Apparently by the time the ambulance came, I was kind of like, trying to move and like I was incoherent, but I was trying to move and fight with them. So one of my friends, um, Joe came over and kind of comforted me and, and talked to me. And so he was able to kind of keep me more stable. And so he actually came in the ambulance with me to talk to me, to reassure me. So that way I would stop fighting the paramedics and everything else that was going on. And I don't, I don't have any memory of this. So I'm just going off of what all the witnesses and other people say that are involved. So after the fact, 
apparently after the ambulance had left, Pretzel was taken out by my friend Jen and she took her out just to make sure that she was fine, you know, did some, you know, tricks and things with her just to make sure that she didn't leave on such a note. And I so appreciate her doing that with Pretzel because that's just a great way to make sure that everything finished just fine. And uh, she even said to me afterwards, she's like, you know, Pretzel was fine and quiet, like, and she was really good with your other rounds. Like, I'm really surprised that that happened. Like, I wonder what it was because she didn't see the whole thing of what happened. She's like, I wonder why she even took off in the first place because she's never displayed that in her behavior, in her training. She's been more of a horse to stop and think, not a horse to run. So she's like, what happened? And then the ambulance, so apparently the ambulance went to a location where I was gonna get flown in a helicopter to go to the hospital, but after waiting for a while, the um, there was too much wind, and so the helicopter couldn't come, so the ambulance had to drive me to the, ambul or to the hospital, where I was uh, admitted, I had a CAT scan, I basically had like a full body CAT scan, and they found uh, fractures in my skull, they found multiple hemorrhages in my brain, and I was admitted to the ICU where I was then put on hourly checks. So every hour they would awake me a little bit so they could do an assessment of me and my, my neural status, and then they basically started doing CAT scans um, frequently on me to double check that bleeding because at first it doesn't look so bad and then over the next couple days the bleeding gets worse and worse and worse and then it started to improve so it's like the blood you know just started to build up and then it started to improve and I don't remember any of my CAT scans until the very end I remember my last two CAT scans because I remember being in the hospital bed and getting wheeled down and doing the CAT scan and getting transferred from the bed to the board and it was so painful. I was in so much pain. My tailbone was so sore um, that it, it just hurt a lot. And apparently I was getting maximum pain dosages. I was getting both fentanyl and morphine, uh, maximum Tylenol, like I was getting everything that they could possibly give me for pain and I was still complaining of pain. And then my last CAT scan, I remember I was finally at the point where I could walk down and I remember walking down for my CAT scan and um, that was my last CAT scan I had there. And so what's interesting is when I first shared this whole story, I didn't know a lot of the details about what happened. I didn't know it was a rearing trick. I didn't know it was the horse being hit that actually sent my horse off, which totally makes sense because it made, it made both like a loud smack noise and like it's a horse being hit rearing up behind you like that to a horse that seems like another horse panicking or stressing she doesn't know that it's a a trick that that horse has been trained to do and she runs off and some people were actually um complaining you're not wearing a helmet um you're lucky that you're alive it's like no no folks i was wearing a helmet and i am lucky to be alive and they didn't understand that because the helmet i was wearing was this and this is called a hell hat and this was something that I had bought because I wanted to try to respect the Western discipline and have the Western look with the cowboy hat, but also have the protection of a helmet. So I bought a hell hat. And so this particular helmet, uh, from the outside, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on. There's an impact at the front. There's a little bit where you can see the brown and then there's an impact at the back as well. Uh, so at the back is actually where I fractured my skull and at the front is where I have a huge amount of bleeding in my skull as well. And on the inside, um, there's not really anything that you can see on the inside of the impact, but if you, if you push on the helmet, you can feel like a little bit of a, a crunch. You're like, ooh, that's no longer a good helmet anymore. And so this is the helmet that I was wearing purely because of the looks, because I wanted to have that Western look. The little piece at the front, my husband actually took off because he's gonna put it on a necklace for me. To remember this, which I'm gonna try not to break down and have a whole thing right now. Whew, stay composed, Lindsay, stay composed. This has been so hard. All right, I'm gonna take a breather. All right, I'm back. Okay, so this is the helmet that I normally would wear. This is an IRH helmet. And IRH helmets are what I find are most comfortable 
and usually what I would wear. I only switched because I wanted to have the Western look to match you know, my outfit and everything that I was doing. So this would be the normal helmet uh, that I find more comfortable. And so it would have been really interesting to know if I was wearing this helmet, which actually fits me better, if my head would have been better protected. But we will not know that, but I was wearing a helmet. And so what's really interesting is with the damage that I had to my head, pretty much almost 100% guaranteed I would be dead if I was not wearing a helmet. And there are other horse professionals out there, horse trainers, uh, clinicians out there that have that whole Western thing, uh, mostly the Western ones that wear the cowboy hats and whatnot, and they say that you don't need to wear a helmet or that you wear a helmet just to give you confidence. And for me, I'm very different because I'm a registered nurse and I'm a public health nurse. And so I have a much better understanding of how fragile our brain is. It's not like if you fall off and you break your arm, you can just put it in a cast and be okay. Your brain is much more fragile, really slow healing, and uh, can cause some permanent damage. I can have some lasting after effects because of this. So I'm really grateful I was wearing a helmet because I probably would be dead or have significantly worse damage if I was not. And so I really promote wearing helmets, not because of confidence, but because things out of your control can happen. And this is a really great example of this because I was at a horse show, I had set my horse up for success, I was doing things slowly, I had prepped her on the ground, I was only doing things that she was ready to do in the sense of she knew how to ride sideways and backwards and those were all skills that we had practiced. It was because somebody else did something that they probably should not have done so close to another horse when they knew they're at a competition for green Mustangs, for Mustangs that have only been in training for four months, that are doing a walk trot competition. This is not a Mustang competition where the horses are doing a walk trot canter competition and people have gone much more in depth into their training. They knew that these horses were green. They knew that these are Mustangs fresh out of the pens for only four months. So to do something like that behind a horse that's only maybe 40 feet away from you max tops was not a wise decision at all. And to hit your horse, not just because it was the rear cue, but to hit your horse, to make that super loud smack noise that a witness heard it, who was not even beside the arena watching. They were up at the barns and they're like, whoa, like what's that loud? Oh my gosh, now there's a horse running. So that to me is like very unwise to do something like that behind a horse that's so green. It caused everything. I know it wasn't on purpose. I know it was accidental. Um, it was just them being so focused on their themselves getting themselves ready for the competition that they weren't paying attention to the others But that just goes to show you that stuff's gonna happen out of your control and it might not even be another competitor There could have been like there's been incidences for me where I've been on trail rides and my horses have stepped on a hornet's nest and Everybody's been getting stung and chaos happens and we all jump off our horses and run for the hills and Because it's crazy and sometimes stuff just happens so I highly recommend wearing a helmet because you never know what's gonna happen and your head is just so fragile compared to the rest of your body, which can heal much easier in a cast or something else. And so what are the after effects now? Well, I'm not working right now. I am usually a nurse, but I'm not able to work right now because I have a lot of issues with my brain. So I can walk and talk, which is why I'm able to talk to you and seem you know, pretty good. But at this point in time, I've not been cleared to exercise. I have not been cleared to drive. I have not been cleared to, um, to spend more than an hour on my phone or on a screen. And I do find that when I'm on a screen, um, my head starts to feel overwhelmed. I start to get pressure. I can start to get the pain, but also my vision starts to go a little bit and everything goes blurry if I'm on a phone for, for too long and it's harder to read the smaller words. And certain noises set me off. Um, loud noises, especially if both my kids, I've got a two and a four year old kid, and if they both start crying or complaining at the same time, I can get very overwhelmed really fast. And uh, other just kind of beeping noises. I remember when I was at my doctor's office, they have this um, furnace vent and it's got this sound 
it's like this woo -woo 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 -woo. I could only handle it for so long before I just burst into tears and I was like I'm sorry um, can we just go to a different room where there isn't that furnace thing and so we did or when I was at the hospital uh, waiting for a neurologist they had this monitor that was beeping and I just I couldn't handle it so I actually had to wait outside of the hospital for a doctor because the beeping was just too much I didn't have my noise canceling headphones and I find I struggle a little bit with my speech too sometimes I struggle with some of the words I have to redo things sometimes um, so there's lots of little things that happen a lot of motion affects me as well I tried to watch an action movie with my husband and I couldn't because the screen was moving too much, uh, like the focus of the images and the objects, it was just too much all going on that I just couldn't focus on it, so it just wasn't right. So although I'm pretty comfortable walking and talking, there's a lot of other things that I'm not good at doing. And another little one is I noticed that when it comes to learn something new, it's more stressful and overwhelming on my brain and I need to have some quiet time afterwards. So I'm pretty good talking and reiterating things from my past and thank goodness I remember all of my Harmony Horsemanship training and so that part's all great. But it's going to be a process for me to be able to learn new things again, to be able to be on screens longer, to be able to handle noises, to be able to handle motion. So there's a bunch of things that are um, on the road to recovery for me. Going forward, I'm going to do another video for you guys that shares where my horses are at and how I ended up rehoming all of my Mustangs. It was a really tricky process because I wasn't able to actually handle my horses or show them for people. They were having to look at videos from several weeks earlier of the horses being trained because um, it was very much after the fact. So that's been a really huge, um, huge financial loss for me and an emotional loss for me that I wasn't able to finish their training as much as I'd like to. Normally when I'm getting Mustangs or I'm taking part in training competitions, I like to get the horses trained, walk, trot, canter pretty solidly so that way they can find homes with just your average horse owner. They're not looking for horse trainers, they're just looking for horse knowledgeable people um, that can be ridden by a variety of people and don't need somebody that's super um, keen on training. But because of everything that happened, I needed to find horse trainers that were looking for winter projects that they could still take on more horses. So I was lucky to be able to find some people locally to do that. And I'll, I'll share more about that in a future video. And then also it's been a huge help with the GoFundMe page. I wanna thank everybody that's contributed to that. Um, if you didn't know about the GoFundMe page, I'm going to drop a link in the description for this video and you can take a look at it there. Uh, everything that you guys have donated has been so helpful and just going towards the horse's care because there's so much that's happened that I'm not able to continue taking on a lot of the commitments that I've had. I had to cancel a lot of the clinics that I was going to be teaching. I have had to cancel lessons that I normally teach. I can't do a lot of my screen time, so even virtual lessons that I do with people I've had to cancel because I just can't do all of that screen time. So everything that you've um, donated has really helped continuing to care for the horses and also just doing those regular bill payments because I don't know when I'm going to be able to go back to work as a nurse. It's definitely helped relieve a lot of stress and helped to give me a lot more options because I just don't know how the future's gonna go. I don't know how the next few months are gonna go. I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, that the doctors clear me soon that I can start to at least handle the horses and do some groundwork training again because I have some exciting things coming up for 2024 already where I've got the, another Mustang expected um, that I'd already committed to before the whole accident as well as breeding my two horses. So we're gonna have some babies, we're gonna have um, more Mustangs and a whole bunch more happening. So. Thank you so much for all of your support. I love the horse community and you guys have been absolutely amazing. And I promise I'll keep sharing updates of everything that's going on at the farm and all of the training and everything that my staff are still doing here. Remember to subscribe and check out harmonyhorsemanship.com for even more learning.